Hello there guys, Daniel Childs back here again. It's team selector time for the game against Savet tomorrow night at Stamford Bridge. The first leg of the Europa Conference League playoff and hopefully an evening at the bridge that will bring Enzo Maresca his first competitive win as Chelsea head coach and also put us very close to completing the tie get some confidence, get some momentum heading into Sunday's game against Wolves, where hopefully we can also achieve our first Premier League win of the season. So, yeah, I think this is a big game. I, I really do. And I, I don't think that Maresca and, and Chelsea in general can afford to overlook, to underappreciate how important it is to start gaining momentum after what happened on Sunday it wasn't a disaster but by no means was it a success so you really need to start lifting the mood you start we need to start seeing on a very basic level our team score goals our team look attackingly you know fluid and feel confident that the team is moving in a positive direction and he can start that process tomorrow night so I think in terms of the team I'm going to be going for it has to be strong. Chelsea need to win this game. And, and the byproduct of putting out a strong team is hopefully you get the job done quickly and that next week's game isn't that much of a stress for Chelsea. So we'll go into all of that. Obviously, we'll look at what Maresca said in the press conference. There's still been some drama, of course, because it's Chelsea. We'll look at Savet. There isn't a lot known about them, but we'll look at their form and their lineup from recent games and maybe what Chelsea can exploit. And then, of course, I will give you my predicted lineup. Please do like, subscribe, rate and review if you're listening on the podcast. Really does help the show out. So, Enzo Maresca, the main kind of takeaway from his press conference was obviously being asked about the Sterling situation, which we discussed yesterday, and also the Ben Chilwell one. Now it seems like Sterling and Chilwell are training away from the first team. So effectively, they are doing the Chalabar and Gallagher playbook once again. I mean, you can argue in some ways that's got them somewhere because Gallagher has now officially left Chelsea and joined Atletico Madrid. Draft Felix has now officially signed. That was kind of the other big Chelsea news today before recording this preview. I just, I, I don't, it, it's the way you go about things. It's not that either Sterling or Chilwell under no circumstances can be sold, but I just... I just don't understand the need to do it in this fashion. And what happens, because Chirwell and Sterling, we spoke about this yesterday, are, are two players in a similar kind of boat in the sense that they are players under big wages comparative to recent wages being given out at Chelsea, who I'm not sure are going to attract the biggest offers. So Chelsea are kind of hoping that before transfer deadline day, something materializes out of nowhere that convinces the players to move and also gives Chelsea enough financial incentive to sell. So it's a risky move because if you get to the end of this transfer window and neither Ben Chirwell nor Raheem Sterling have left, Trevor Chalobah, you still need to factor that in as well. What happens to all three of those players? Are they just now with the academy for the rest of the season? Can you really have a situation where Ben Chirwell, a European Cup winner for Chelsea, a first-team player, an experienced name? Raheem Sterling, of course, hasn't won anything with Chelsea, but of course has won a lot of Premier League titles. He's a very well-known English player, a very well-known European player. Can you just allow those players and just discard them? I mean, I just, I, I wonder what effect this is. You have to always, I think for me, a lot of people like to look at Chelsea things in isolation. You have to look at the broader picture here of how this is going to impact players in the current dressing room. I believe, you know, I wouldn't be too surprised if Sterling, no matter what fans think of him, is probably an influential figure, given what he's done in English football. Cheerwell too, is, is known as quite a popular figure in the dressing room. So, I mean, for both of those, those players' sake, I mean, yeah, sure, it, it's important that they get their moves away. But, I mean, in terms of the the optics, the PR, and, and at the moment, it, it's, I, again... You have to, you know, I, I struggle with people who try and argue that this isn't a mess or this doesn't look messy because it just doesn't look right. It doesn't look like something of a of a club functioning in the best way. But let's look at Savet. Um, so, you know, Chelsea should be winning this game and, and Savet are not a great team. Um, they finished third in the Swiss League last year. They did win the Swiss Cup, which they've already progressed after a 7-1 win at the weekend. But if you look at their performances so far, they are in front of Chelsea in terms of competitive action because the Swiss League starts in July. So they've already played a couple of games, but it's been mixed so far. They did, of course, lose to Braga, which meant that they were in the Europa Conference League. Uh, they've won two of their first couple of uh, league games, lost two. They lost 6-0 at home to Basel. Now, of course, Chelsea did play Basel years ago in the Europa League and Champions League, but Basel 
did not have a good season. They actually fin finished below Savet, but they got absolutely battered. And I watched that game back the highlights. And um, yeah, I think the interesting thing with Savet is that don't seem to have a lot of speed in defence. Um, are prone to a lot of individual errors. And in terms of just what Chelsea should be looking to exploit, just pound for pound, Chelsea have better players. They should be putting away Savet quite easily and quite comfortably here. I think that the idea that Chelsea should be going into this game, not complacent, not arrogant, that well, we just turn up and kind of half arse it and we'll walk through easily. That's not the point I'm trying to make. But the idea that Savet as some kind of European powerhouse, uh, even Braga, I think, of course, have more, I think, European pedigree and experience are, are more a no name. So Chelsea, this is a great opportunity. It's a great platform. It shouldn't be seen as a banana skin. It should be seen as an opportunity for Chelsea to progress through to the next round. Um, in terms of their, their system, they play kind of a bog standard 4-2-3-1, I think, in terms of looking to get it forward. They'll be looking at getting crosses, airily trying to hurt Chelsea, especially at set pieces. I suspect they will play a deeper mid-low block at Chelsea. I think they'll be forced to based on the fact that Chelsea will likely have a lot of the ball. So really, it's about Chelsea's ability to carve open those opportunities and try and find um, those spaces that I think Maresca is going to be tasked with when Chelsea come up against inferior opposition. So let's move on to my starting eleven Now, Reese James apparently is back, but whether he goes straight into the starting 11, of course, you, Reese James does not factor into your thinking for Sunday because, of course, he's still suspended. I think he's suspended for at least two more games in the league. So, obviously, theoretically, if he's ready, you'd start him in this game because, of course, he has no part to play and you can rest someone else. But there are some players not involved in the A-list or the squad for this game, and that is, of course, Sterling, Chirwell, Wesley Fofana has not been included. That doesn't mean that Fofana won't be included if Chelsea progress. It just means for this game, he is not part of the squad, which I guess, injury-wise, I know he seemed to play well against Man City, but you don't want to risk him, overextend him so early into the season, so he's coming back from an injury. But I still think Chelsea, despite some rotation I'm going to go through this game, it needs to be a strong team because I just think theory-wise and just in terms of mood, Chelsea needs to win this game. I cannot even envisage the disaster of Chelsea not progressing from the playoff and how embarrassing and how damaging that would be to Chelsea's season. You can dismiss the Europa Conference League all you like. I hear rival fans talking about how Chelsea should not be taking it seriously or any fan taking it seriously. Um, you know, it should be embarrassed. If Chelsea don't beat Savet, there's no trust the process. There's no kind of like, I'll oh, just give it time. It's only one game. It's against the champions of the Premier League. No, this is a game, Maresca, Chelsea players, we need to be winning. So for me, I think he needs to be putting out a strong team. And then hopefully, if the team have done their job and Chelsea are comfortable, you can then look to rotate. It's kind of almost the, the, the approach maybe sometimes you should be taking to an FA Cup game. And I think if Chelsea would have won against Man City, there probably would have been more leeway to be a little bit... Um, not save for, I think, more kind of uh, flexible in the team you put out. I think because we didn't win on the weekend, we didn't score, the mood ain't great. You need to bulk up that mood. You hopefully need to get some confidence into your players. And I think this is a great opportunity to do so. So in goal, Jorgensen. Uh, Philip Jorgensen hopefully gets his first start as Chelsea's goalkeeper. And maybe just maybe this is where he quickly progresses and, and, and upgrades himself to become Chelsea's first choice goalkeeper. Um, for as long as Robert Sanchez is around, I, I just can't trust him as Chelsea's number one. And I think that it's time for Jorgensen to get a go and we can hopefully see him in, in action and see what he can provide. Back four, if Reese James is not really ready and again, not really not a player I want to be rushing back into action, I think Malo Gusto probably still starts here and hopefully can provide a lot moving forward. Tosin, I think, will start this game. You're not playing for Fana, so naturally as a right-sided centre-back, he's the obvious option here. And again, hopefully can put a, a strong foot forward in a game. Chelsea will likely have a lot of the ball and impress in front of the Stamford Bridge crowd for the very first time. Now, I was going to play Levi Colwell, but again, another player who suffered quite a lot of injuries last season, especially towards the end of last season. So actually, I'm going to bring Benoit Badiashil into this. So we're going for the second choice kind of back two that we saw throughout preseason. So um, Badiashil, Tosin, I still think have enough quality to get through this game. And it just gives 
Two players in Fafana and Colwell, a chance to rest up. Um, they may get some minutes off the bench in this game. If you, Obviously, you have five subs to play with for Maresca. So I'll go with Badi Ashil. Vega, I think, should be starting at left back. I'd like to see him start his first Chelsea game. I was uh, quite, you know, I, I was quite encouraged by what I saw against Inter Milan. Of course, he came on very late against Man City, so didn't really have a lot of time to impact things. But I feel like this is a competition potentially for him where he's going to gain a lot of minutes. And of course, now Chilwell is being excluded. Obviously, he's now being seen as the second choice. So. Really, this is a chance to impose himself. Now, of course, Kukurea, I think, is obviously in better form and has more pedigree. So if you're going with the argument of a stronger team, you start Kukurea. But I, I just feel like Vega may start the Conference League games a little bit more if Chelsea progress. Then the midfield to Lavia and Caicedo. Lavia came, on, uh, came off early against City, probably too early. But if that's managing minutes, fair enough. But Lavia, of course, was Chelsea's standout player against Man City. And he really gave the anchor point. He gave a lot of the precision. He gave a lot of positives in central midfield. And, you know, I think was really the standout figure in what wasn't a great day for Chelsea. So hopefully for him, this is a next step in progression. Maybe not 90 minutes again. You can maybe rotate him for someone else later on. But I want to see Lavia playing. And I think that he will hopefully give that control, that composure and direction in Chelsea's build-up that is needed in a game where I think he will see a lot of the ball. Moises Caicedo, I think, needs to pick up his fitness and form. Uh, but I, I, I like Lavia and, Lavia and Caicedo. I think they, they offer enough quality on the ball and also just movement off it that, that gives me a little bit of assurance out of the options Maresca has. But we are kind of going, I know it isn't really the formation, but I, I would like to see some variation of a 4-2-3-1 in this game. I'm not saying that the fullbacks can't invert if Maresca wants to do that, but I want to be attack minded. I want to be on the front foot. I want to put exciting players on the pitch and try and get quality that is going to really hurt, disrupt and, and really undermine Savet because I, you know, the lack of speed, the lack of movement coming up against these level of players. Chelsea should have more than enough. So for me, on the right, but has the, the freedom to move centrally, is Cole Palmer. Didn't look at his best, needs match sharpness, didn't have a preseason. So this is a great chance to do that. Christopher Nkunku for me, number 10. I think Palmer and Nkunku can switch as kind of a central player here. Uh, but I do think that Nkunku for me needs to be much more central. He needs to be floating off the centre forward. He needs to be getting inside the box. Him shifted out wide is a complete waste of time. It's a waste of time for everyone. You might as well just play a natural wide player there. So on the left this time, we're going to start Pedro Neto. I think this is a great chance for Pedro Neto to introduce himself properly. He had some nice little moments, but really, again, it was kind of the game was beyond Chelsea and never really got into the position where or got on the ball enough to really impact things. But from the start here, again, out wide, that width is going to be important for Maresca when breaking down low defences. So hopefully for Neto, he can impose himself and, and have a good start. And finally... I feel like there'll be a lot of craving for Mark Guiu, but I'm going to give it to, to Nicholas Jackson. Just again, a bit like Palmer, didn't have a preseason. I think he's lacking match sharpness and hopefully for his sake, a great opportunity to, to open his account. Because you've got five subs, you've got the Wolves game coming up. I suspect there'll be a lot of subs and Guiu can come off the bench. I think Dewsbury Hall will come off the bench. I think Enzo Fernandez would. We may see Mudrick, Madawake, you know, players who played in preseason but haven't started the game so far. But that's why I've gone very strong. I think you want to be in a comfortable position at the end of this game. Maresca wants to walk out of this game with feeling confident. Of course, beating Savet is not going to be some great achievement, but if I, I'm going to be there tomorrow and if Chelsea win 4 or 5 nil in a dream scenario, you, you'd be sat back going, yeah, great, that was enjoyable. We can hopefully take some of the positives and, and confidence and momentum and maybe connections built up into the Wolves game where... Chelsea, of course, is going to be under more scrutiny. It's a Premier League game, but you want the job done. I think Aston Villa 12 months ago against Hibs basically had it sealed after 90 minutes in the first leg. And then the second leg was kind of a procession. And then that gives Maresca next week the chance to rotate and maybe start some of the players I'm not starting here. So you try and put the foot down, the accelerator down, get a lead, make next week a little bit more simple and hopefully uh, start to build some momentum at the start of the season. So that is my lineup. Let me know yours in the comments below and I will see you again very soon. All the best.